live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Informatica World 2019. Brought to you by Informatica. Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of Informatica World here in Las Vegas. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight. We are joined by John Lieto. He is the Director Data Management at Walters Kluwer. Thank you so much for coming on the show. You're welcome. So, Walters Kluwer is a global provider of professional information, software solutions, uh, tech, tax information. Tell our viewers a little bit more about the company and about your role at the company. Yeah, so Walters Kluwer, uh, I would say probably 20 years ago was a, uh, a typical holding company. You know, has a very long history of publishing in Europe. It's over 185 years old in Europe. Um, but went on a journey to, to acquire businesses that were in the services business, with a focus on legal, but there are also big concentrations in health divisions, uh, tax and accounting, really a professional company. Um, very, very, very big in print. What happened over the last 10, 15 years though, it's completely flipped over to digital. In fact, it's been a, one of the more uh, successful transformations. So now, we're mostly in the digital space and electronic space. So where I come in and my business unit comes in, CT Corporation is a 126 year old company, uh, number one player in registered agent services. Legal information, helping companies like Informatica stay in compliance. Uh, the United States has you know, 50 states with 50 sets of rules, and um, plus you know, uh, international. So typically companies of any size get a provider. Sometimes their law firms will do it, but a lot of times it's going to be CT corporations, things like that. My role in the company, uh, I've been at 19 years. I've had a mix of roles, mostly in the business, but a little technical. Um, I am a director of data management, which I am basically in charge of managing governance and uh, data quality for, for the business. Uh, it is uh, focused on, on the customer right now and all things related to customer, but we're expanding into uh, other domains like uh, vendors, product suppliers, and supporting a pretty large digital transformation. So I'm sure in your role you have a lot of practical insights for MDM practitioners, but before we go there, I want to hear from you about the customer mindset. Yeah. I mean, this, this is a moment for data governance and security sure. and privacy, yeah. uh, a real inflection point, and like Walters Kluwer, so many companies undergoing their own digital transformations. Uh -huh. How would you describe the customer mindset about all of this? How are customers wrapping their brains around it? Yeah, so, so for us, you know, we're not in a very regulated business. I mean, we, we touch customers that are heavily regulated, but we're not. I mean, we're a service company, right? We, most of the stuff, the data we deal with is public knowledge, right? Uh, a company's data is public knowledge. You can go on any state website and find out exactly when Informatica was formed, who the board of directors are, and so it's all public. Um, but customers, are extremely sensitive about you know, where their data is and, and what we're doing with it. So, so you know, we were on top of that, especially for our, uh, our foreign customers. But internally to CT and Walters Kluwer, we have to be very, very, very customer focused because it's very direct service, right? Um, so it's all about the customer. And how, I got to, how we got to this point of using Informatica, MDM, Master Data Management, is trying to get close to the customer, trying to understand the customer. Our customers go from JP Morgan to these big, 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 big comp companies that have you know, investments in, in companies that you wouldn't, you wouldn't even know they're related to that customer. So they rely on us to help them stay compliant. To you know, how, do I, how do I deal with these, these diverse businesses that are under my portfolio and how do I keep them compliant in the States? So we have all this data <laughs> and we help our customers understand it um, and, and, and know what to do next. I almost anticipate where they're going to fall out of compliance in the state. So what is your advice for the people who are really starting, for the executives starting at Square One, trying to think about a master data management solution? Yeah, so, so great question, and it's really where our, the heart of my devotion has been the last year. Um, I would say the most important thing is start with a business case. Understand where your business is going. Make it about what outcomes are you looking for, right? Really thoroughly understand that. Also, take the systems or, that are, or the subjects that are important to you 
in your company and profile it. Understand that, the, that data. You can come to an MDM project, a mass data management project with so much knowledge first. Don't, don't just say, oh well, everybody's doing mass data management, or we should do it too. I mean, it might be true, but you're really not going to get the outcomes. And then focus your project to hit those business goals. Because MDM is a process and a tool. It's not an answer. You need to use that tool to get to where you are. So for us, the number one thing was reduce duplication. Okay, MDM tools do that. So we're trying to get to the golden record, okay? Data quality, I don't have good phone numbers, I have bad email addresses. Oh, Mass Data Manager does that too. So again, it's, it's, it's going for the, the, the outcomes you're driving for, and MDM happens to be a good tool for that. So. So it's, it's really def about defining the objectives before you Absolutely. even jump in. And then as, and then are there, do you recommend experiments? I mean, oh, how, I, what's, the, I, what's the approach you? you wonderful need? question. So, we, in data we call it profiling, right? So, and you want to go small wins, because one of the things that'll happen to anyone in this space is the business is really not sure about this investment, you know? Um, I mean, these days, data is becoming so huge that it's becoming a, a lot easier for guys like me to, to win a business case. But you know, two years ago, it was pretty hard. Um, but I, I'm sorry, I just lost my train of thought. No, I, but I think that but that's an interesting point. Just talking about the overcoming the skepticism yeah. within these companies to 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 latch on to this idea, and as you as you were saying, the announcing the small wins yeah, and so really getting you. everyone on board. Oh, so. So what, what we did is we have profiled, found a, a problem. Oh, we have definite uh, cost of duplication. We've got you know, email addresses that are completely bogus. So let's just take two, those two. And we did small little pilots. We used tools we had. We completely manual, ad hoc, you know, let's fix 200 records. Let's take a really important customer that we're trying to onboard or expand and let's fix that data and then show the outcomes. You know, go for the quick wins, communicate, communicate, communicate. And once we did that, and I mean, we did a series of, I want to say, 30 or 40 of these, that built our requirement set. We built the requirement set by doing. And it was so easy that way to, to, one, to show victories, but two, to really get the requirements to a point where we can build the system. Um, we happened to, to, to fall on that method for prior learnings of not doing well on projects that were, had nothing to do with MBM. So for this one, you know, I think the other piece of advice I would give folks is we built a data management team of business analysts that know our business and data. It is really critical that you keep this function out of IT. IT is your supporter and your partner. This does not go to IT. So we know our data. I have a guy on my team that's 45 years in the company a woman who's 28 years on the company, just for example. So we can do a lot without a tool. And what's happening is now we're like, you know, we're live for, I guess, going on eight months now, and we're like staying on top of making sure the tool's delivering what it's supposed to deliver based on our deep knowledge. And I think what you're talking about really is introducing this technology and this, this new way of thinking, and it's really all about change management. It truly is. One of the things that we're talking a lot here on theCUBE about is the skills gap, and this is a problem throughout the technology industry. How big a problem is it for you at Walters Kluwer, and, and how, what are you doing to make sure that you have the right technical talent mm -hmm. on your team? And as you were saying, not just the technical talent, but also the business, the understanding of the business. So, one thing to understand is Walters Kluwer is a fairly big company, uh, and we are just, as a company, it's just starting this journey. I have a small data management team in one business unit in Wallace Kluwer. There's another business unit within our health division that has data management. And that's all that I know of that is a formal data management. That's pretty small. So it's, it's going, just beginning. It's, what we're doing, we're trying to communicate, communicate, communicate. And what I, I am having some success because in our next huge journey, which is a digital transformation, a six year project, Data now is center. I've been asked to actually be the business sponsor for the data track, which two years ago, that would not have happened. So I take that as a win. 
Um, but you make a fair point. I mean, skills and understanding both of the business and technical ever is always a challenge. And it's justifying, you know, bringing in that skill set. Uh, no, we can just outsource that, or we'll, we'll just use a consultant. Like, I'm right now fighting a battle to bring in an, a data architect full time. You know, they don't understand that, like, just that you have role. to architect yes. things. We've not done that, so what you have, because I'm doing the data governance piece right now, and what I'm finding is, you know, it's not the Wild West, but you can't always know what the parts of the organization is doing. And a lack of an architect is not keeping all the plumbing all centralized. So as I build this data governance, I'm going to centralize like data definitions, a data glossary, a data catalog, but I'm going to be <laughs> looking around going, okay, so how do I actually have the technology piece architected correctly? And that's the piece I'm really trying to pump. So hopefully, when we build this data layer we're building, it, it, my goal is to, 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 to prove to the business that you need to fill this, this role. It's not me, it's going to be someone who really is deep, 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 deep in, in architecture. Hire a contractor, get that small win. That's what we're doing. And then, <laughs> and then the so proof. I'm in the I learned that from you, John. <laughs> I'm, actually, I'm actually in the process of doing just that. Excellent. Uh, one of those vendors is here. here. Well, we'll, so. we'll look forward to talking to you next yeah. year and hearing an update. There John Lieto, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. Very welcome, thank you. I'm Rebecca Knight. We will have more of theCUBE's live coverage of Informatica World. Stay tuned. Thank <laughs> you.